Hello and welcome back to another Outlaw walkthrough. So today we are going to be covering the Teams section. So let's go ahead and navigate to that. So just right over here on your left, uh, where it is the little people icon, this is going to be your team section. From here, it is more than just the users that are using this, but it is also, um, but it is also how you can change things like the details, maybe the address, the logo, letterhead, your workflows, your checkpoints. You can view your integrations and you can also update the theme that all of your documents are using. So let's go ahead and jump into it. When you first click onto the team section, you will notice that up here at the top, if we were part of a different team or maybe you're using the same email and you're on you know, just another um, outlaw org or team, you can toggle between those teams here. Uh, most people are only just gonna see their one org here and then eventually if you did ever get a second maybe outlaw environment, you could add that here and then toggle between the two. So that's just something to note there. And then coming into the landing page and the details. So. Obviously, like this says over here, this team information, um, this is the general information that is going to be across your entire org and can show up on your documents. So when you make a template and you're using the letterhead function, you will notice that it is going to pull in the logo and it is also going to pull in this uh, legal name and then the address. Sometimes I have clients that like to also put um, things like maybe their cell phone or their phone number or website also in their address line. So if you wanted to do that, that's very simple as well. You can just come in here. We can hit enter um, and I actually did shift enter. So it'll actually just drop down a line and then you could type in, you know, if I could spell, <laughs> you could type in phone number here and just imagine it being the actual phone number. And then, you know, you can also type in here. You can type in Vine skills if you wanted to see that. Also for contract footer, I have had clients actually put, you know, their running total. So maybe they wanted to do, um, you know, that they wanted to get this information, maybe the address, put that in here. And then we could put a little line in here and then we could put, you know, the phone number and then maybe another line. And then we can do, you know, your website or something like that. Um, that's also a possibility too. I will say that the contract footer, that's going to show up on every single uh, contract that you're running. So you can't just toggle it on and off for some things like you can the letterhead. Um, this information, you know, maybe if you're doing a court document or something like that, where you don't want all of this information on there, you can toggle that off. So that's kind of, you know, the ideas behind that. Also for this is obviously, oops, sorry. This is what this is set up for, um, is giving a little example in here, you know, confidential and proprietary. Um, you know, if you have something that you always want in your contract footer, that's gonna be showing up on all of your documents, you can put that here as well. And then here you can just come in and you can upload whatever logo and letterhead you have. Your logo does need to be a PNG file and it can only be, I think like 50, 50 K like the size. So if it's any larger than that, we just have to downsize it. Um, but that is how you upload those. And you can also obviously change the legal name here if you needed to as well. <clears throat> the next part here that I'm going to show you is the members section. So the member section, as you can see here, you can um, not only add in new members based on their email address, but you can also, once you're adding them in, you can give them a role. And we can talk about the different roles as well. It's pretty simple here. A viewer, they can only view uh, templates, but they can't edit or create new ones. The editor, obviously they can edit and create new templates. And then you have what is known as an owner. They can edit, create, and manage other members on this team as well. So if you think about it in file line terms, the owner would kind of be your uh, org admin. They're able to do all these um, changes and, and observe others versus, you know, your viewer and editor roles don't have as many permissions and capabilities there. When you're adding in a new member, you can also give them specific access. So observers can see all contracts be created by this team's templates. So um, previously, when we were talking about the contracts and the contract template, 
I'm able to see all of them because in this org, I am not only an owner, but I'm also an observer owner as well. So I can see everybody's contracts, what everybody's working on. So that would also be great for like an org admin or somebody who's highly involved in your business or company that needs to see all of that. Then just here again, once you select, if you wanna be an observer, you will get another set of drop down here. And these are going to be the user's roles. So obviously we've kind of already gone over this. Um, you can be a viewer, you know, you can only view the contract as you're an observer. You can be a proposer, which means you can redline uh, to make changes. You can also be an editor where you can fill in variables and actually edit the contract, or you can be an owner, which again, you can fill in all the variables, edit the contract and manage the sharing. And then here, obviously, if you uncheck this, they're not going to be um, added to new documents. So typically when you're adding someone, you do want to add them to the new documents. And that is how you would add in another user. Basically, then it would send them an email to join. They would click into that and accept the invite. The other things to note here is you can obviously see the name of the person when you uh, typically send this off, you only are entering in their email up here. So you're not going to have a chance to input their name, but that is something once they sign up and click on that button to accept the invite, they can uh, update their name there. We obviously see their email. When you set up your account, you can add in a title. So either maybe the title that you have at your job or maybe the person that, or the title that you wanna use, you know, within this um, outlaw org. So maybe um, maybe it is, you know, for us, it's the sandbox, man sandbox manager um, that's managing everybody here. Uh, but, you know, you can customize what title you wanna put in for each individual person. The next one is roles, and we kind of already talked about that when we were adding in a new member. So if you ever get confused, it's really nice that there is this, you know, built in options here that as you toggle through, it'll tell you, you know, what the different team roles are. So that is what that relates to. And then you'll see the new docs, which we also toggled on when we added people. And then you can see their level of observer and whatnot. And if you needed to, if you are an observer and an owner in here, you can actually come in here and you can update permissions to this. You can update anybody if you already have those permissions. If not, um, you know, if you were just a viewer or maybe an editor, you're not going to have all those same capabilities. So you wouldn't be able to go into somebody else's profile and update them, but you could update yourself um, depending on the level. So that pretty much covers it for team for members here. Let's jump into workflows. So workflows, this is a really great tool to use when you're approving uh, documents and different templates that you have. So let's go ahead and just look at this predefined one. It is the default that um, all the different outlaw orgs come with. So when you click into here, you obviously have the option to set this one as your default. If you do like this one and you just want to make some other changes, um, if not, you know, you can also start from scratch and we can make a brand new one as well to fit your needs. <clears throat> you can see here that maybe if you don't want to have to go through these different steps, you know, you're able to delete these. You're also able to move them around depending on how you want that workflow to be. And the best part is you're also able to rename them and change the color. So, you know, depending on um, what your uses are for Outlaw, whether it's legal or maybe you're um, another company that's wanting to use this mostly just for the contract form, you can come up here and you can set up your individual steps that are going to be part of your process. Um, I've had clients that have just, it's gone from setup, you know, to drafting, to signing, that's it. Um, or maybe instead of signing, they just call it done. Uh, so you're able to customize all of that here and figure out what you want those actual individual steps to be. I will see that most people are pretty happy with these preset ones. So, you know, maybe that's you and you don't want to have to mess with anything. That's great too. But, you know, you do have the options to come in here. You can update this. You could rename things, move things around. You can also add in a brand new step if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, we can kind of go from there. So just talking about adding in another workflow step here is obviously when you're adding one in, you're going to need to come in here. We're going to, oops, we're going to need to, let's rename it. 
Let's go ahead and give it a fun color. We could add in a description if we wanted to. And then we can talk about the functionality. So this is the document variables and text that are editable. So you'll know that most of these, it's defaulted to normal. But if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that we can actually update this to different functionalities, right? So locked, uh, when the document is in read only, it would still be able to move to this step. If we're e-signing, if the document is uh, read only and e-signing is enabled, um, this would still pop up and we could have that as a step in our process. So, you know, there's all kinds of different ones. Maybe it is even checkpoint, which we will be getting to a little bit later because we haven't gone over that yet, but you can select a checkpoint group for this to be assigned to. And whenever we get to this step, if these people would come in, whether it looks like they're on the legal team here, they would come in and you can choose the approval rule, either unanimous or first response. You can also make it skip skippable um, and then kind of go from there. And so these are all just more finite little tweaks that you can make when you add in these different steps. And you can do this for each one. If we go ahead and cancel out, and let's just go ahead and delete that one because we're not going to use it. Um, you can see here that there are multiple options and to update each one of these. Um, so you can see you yeah, that this one is set to the e-signing phase because this is when you are requesting a signature from somebody. So, you know, if you go through, you can kind of get a better sense of understanding of when you want to use the functionality on these different steps. And we can talk about that a little bit more later too. So there you have it. That is basically the workflow information there. And of course, if you wanted to add a new workflow, the same thing would happen. You know, you would just click new workflow. You can come up here. Maybe you wanted to name this um, like legal proceedings. So you could come in here and you could build out your actual steps for this. And usually, you know, it might be a setup. You could rename this. You can call this like, you know, initial review or something, then maybe you want to get rid of draft, you could delete it. Maybe you're like, nobody's going to be signing this. This is just going to be documentation that we're sending out to clients or something. You can get rid of that. And then you can just have these and you would hit save and you would have a whole other workflow. So the nice thing is once you have your workflow built out, or if you, if you had multiple ones, let's just go ahead and add in, you know, this test one here and let's just get rid of a few options. Um, we can then go into our template and let's just pick this one. We can come over here to the little gear in the right hand side. We can hit that. And then from this workflow, we can actually change it so that this specific document is using a specific workflow. So the one that is pre-made is this contracts one. You can also switch to legal filings if you would like to, or you know, we can use the one that we also made and I just made it so I might need to refresh and then try and change it to it, which is maybe why it's not showing up. Uh, so you, now you can see it here. Um, these other two are predefined by Outlaw and they are already there. The legal one is there. You have to keep it. The contract's default, you are able to delete it. And then of course you are able to make your custom default or custom workflows and you can set those as default if you wanted to, if it's something you're going to be using again and again. And so just to show you what that would look like back here, let's go in and view this contract. So this one was already using the um, contracts default. And so you can see here that the setup and done, these are all the different um, workflows that are already pre-built in. And this one's already completed, but if it wasn't, you know, it would take you through that setup, that review, the signing, all of those until it got to the done phase. All right, let's head back to our team section and let's talk about checkpoints. So checkpoints here are a great way to invite in users to your document that either work for your firm or if you maybe it's outside counsel or something for this instance, I know we're looking at legal team here. So maybe you're inviting in an um, outside legal team to review this before you send it off to a customer or a client just because you need to get a second look on it.
So let's just go ahead and jump into this. In this checkpoint, you can see that we have the name of it, which is totally customizable. We have the checkpoint key, you know, the field selector. We can add a description if we want to. This one's pretty straightforward. It's the legal team, right? So I don't know if we need a description, but you can add it in. And then from anyone that's in your um, org's you know, member list, you can choose to add them or remove them. So from here, you can see I added in this, um, I don't have the Vine Skills team in there, but maybe I wanted to, I can just click on their name and it'll go over. Um, I also have myself in here and then um, Jasmine as well. So that is why we see three participants in here. So we can go ahead and hit update. If I wanted to make a new checkpoint group, the same thing, right? We're just going to come in here and and starting again. Same thing if you needed to. Same thing applies if you needed to make a new checkpoint group. You would just come in here and name the group wherever you wanted to. You can add a description and then you could just click people over and hit save to create your new checkpoint. So what's an example of checkpoints? Let's go ahead and navigate over to the contract so that we can take a peek on basically what this would look like. And let me just pause so this will buffer. So here we are here. Let's go ahead and jump into this contract that's in the setup phase. So we will have the widest range of possibilities. And this one's probably better to show also for the workflow here. You know, you can see all of our different phases for that. So for the workflow, you know, we were talking about that we could customize these if we wanted to, but you can see all of them here and you can see that this one is just in the setup phase and that's because this information has not been filled in. But once you finish filling that in these two fields, it would then move into um, the review or signing phase here. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and talk about checkpoints. So if you are in a contract, whether it is right here in your um, contracts tab, or if you're working out of FileVine in your FileVine, and we can take a peek here because this one is still in setup. This is, you know, obviously if you're working out of FileVine generating these documents and you have FVDA, so you can see that, you know, same thing apply. We can still see the setup phase here and here are the checkpoints here. So I'm just going to jump back to the initial one so that we can look at all the checkpoints here and then eventually we will check them out in FileVine as well. So for this checkpoint, it's just this little flag up here on the right hand side. We go ahead and select that. We then would select legal team. And from here, we have this set up so that when we invite in the legal team, it is set up to unanimous um, versus first response. If I wanted to, I can change it. And then whoever, you know, essentially opens up this email, reads it first, makes a decision, they're obviously going to be the person that is um, moving this forward. But if you need everybody to agree on it or everybody to read it, um, you can move it to unanimous. And then what you would do, you would just hit run. And now it's going to say checkpoint in progress. Um, and basically then the people that are invited are going to come in and make this decision based on what you sent. All right, so like I was saying, you this is set to first response, and basically whoever's going to answer this first is going to make this decision. So um, as you can see, when I hit that run function, I actually got an email, and this is what it looks like. You know, you've been requested to review this checkpoint, medical authorization, and then I'm just going to hit review contract. And it's going to load this up. You can see there's a checkpoint in progress. It will resume once this checkpoint is closed. You just go ahead and sign in under my other user so we can see what this looks like from my end. All right, so you can see that I am now signed in as me, um, not the person that executed this. And let me just go ahead and close out of this because now we know what that looks like. Um, and so you can see myself and Jasmine have been invited to review this. Um, it says that we are waiting for my review, tap for more info, you know, it'll give you all this information that is required for this. So we can go ahead and hit yes, that's going to be good for me. And now the checkpoint is complete and I can move on with other information. Say I wanted to fill this in, let's just put in some random data here. And now watch what happens when I update this for the workflow up here. So you can see now it was in the setup and, and phase, and now it moved into review. I did my checkpoint, everything is good. And from here, 
we don't need to invite in another checkpoint unless we want to, unless there's another one built into the workflow. And then we could move on with this. We could start sharing it with our um, share with user. And then that's going to move us on to the signing phase. And then once somebody signs, it then moves into the done phase. And um, once worth noting, once it's still in the review phase, I can still come in here and I can make edits. I can redline. Um, I can delete information here, different things like that. Hit save. Now this is gone. I can edit this contract in its you know full entirety. Uh, once I do share it with our signer, um, it's going to move into the signing phase and then I'm not able to edit anything. And once they sign, I'm also not able to edit anything. So any edits you need to make, any checkpoints, anything like that, it needs to happen before it moves into the signing or done phase. So the next tab we're going to talk about is integrations. And as you can see here, we have some interesting information. We have our API key information. This is how we actually connect our outlaw to our file vine. Um, we're using, you know, a key and you actually do have to come in here and configure it. Uh, I would not recommend deleting it, but you can come in here and look at it if you need to. Um, from here, you know, if you are connecting it to your file line or plan to in the future, we can also have that enabled from here. And that's just a quick, you know, um, a quick Slack or email to Filevine, and we can get that all set up for you. And you can also come in here and configure it as well. You know, you can see all the information that is tied to it. And that's basically that. There's not a whole lot to mention with this. Most of this is set up before um, you even get into your org or anything, but that is where you can find this information. And for some reason, if you ever needed your API key or something like that, this is where you'd be able to find it. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is themes. So the themes are something that throughout all the different templates um, that you have on your org, this is going to um, basically control the text, the heading that you want to use, um, this, you know, the line spacing, if you want to do any page numbering, all those things, you can actually create different themes for your org that uh, work with what you want and all those different customizations. So there is a default theme called the outlaw theme. It is already set to default. If you don't like that one and you know you have certain stipulations to make your own, you can as well. We made one called you know VS for Vine Skills. So let's go ahead and click into there and check out that. So first things first, you know you can come in here and you can um, edit the name if you wanted to. You can also set this one as a default if you plan on using this one more than the outlaw default. And then you know you can add a description. Maybe you say you know this is. Um, single spaced and you're going to have another one maybe that you want to make a theme that's going to be double spaced. you can make those notes in there and you can now see it here but let's go ahead and edit the style info so when we first click in you'll see that we're greeted by general so this is going to mean all of the um, general information that's going to be in your template like the paragraph text the paragraph title you know paragraph numbering um, different things like that, the title of the document, which is, you know, when we saw across maybe when we were talking about fee agreement or other things, that title is in a specific um, font here. And so all of these things can be changed. Now, I just want to stress this hard because this is at an org level. So this is not, you know, I don't want one document that has Helvetica as the font, another one that has, you know, Times New Roman as a font. If you set it up here as a theme, that's going to be across all of your documents. You can obviously have multiple themes that, you know, that you can change and manipulate depending. But if you're looking at a document, and you say, okay, no, I want this one paragraph to be this font and another one to be this. And I want the spacing to be this. Um, there's no way to do that. Like have multiple, um, you know, things like that within a template. So that gets a little bit confusing sometimes. You are still able to manipulate various things from the templates and maybe it might just be easier if I show you after this. But um, things like formatting, like you can still always, you know, bold, italicize, underline, you can, you know, switch the alignment, um, but you wouldn't want be able to go in and basically update the color from that specific template. It's not going to work that way because in general, Outlaw is a contract management system, not a word processor. So there are some small drawbacks there. But for this, you know, if you wanted to update your contract title, you can come in here. These are the few 
fonts that you can choose from. You can also choose the size of it. You can choose the line spacing. It goes up all the way to 2.9. You know, we already showed you can pick a color for that. And then it kind of gives you a little preview here so you know what it's going to look like before you actually get into your document. Something also worth noting here is that Outlaw recently added the ability to do line numbering. So if you're doing things like pleadings, you can come in here, you can turn this on, and now that'll show up in your document. It'll only show down um, through about nine or 10, but then when you fully execute your pleading document or whatever document that you need to have that line numbering, it'll have that going all the way down. The caveat there is, is that it's only available for PDFs at the moment. I know they're working towards when you export it to a you know regular Microsoft Word doc that that will also show up, but that's currently um, not the case. So like I was saying, you're able to come in here, you're able to adjust all the different um, text that you want and make all of these um, choices. And then that's built into your theme and then you can reference that on other documents. Same over here for the page, you can set up your margins. You can do a continuous you know, line numbers there if you needed to. You can add in borders and different things and you're able to control you know, the different widths and if they're solid or double or things like that. So this is all things that you can build in to your themes there. Now, if you wanted to make a new theme, obviously, when you make one, you can base it off of a previous theme. Um, these are obviously the ones that are already built in, Outlaw Default, there's a traditional, and then we have the one that we created, which we've now made our default. So if you wanted to, you know, you can come in here, um, let's do a test. We can base it off of, let's base it off of the traditional. And this one's nice. It kind of gives you like a little description of what it's about. We can hit that. We can come in here and then we can update these styles. You know, maybe I want this to be um, orange. That's great. And then I'm going to come in here to paragraph numbering and I actually want this to be double spaced. So you can come in here, you can edit all that. Maybe I don't want it bolded, I want it like this. You can come in, you can edit all that. And then when we navigate back over to our templates, and let's just go ahead and take a peek at, let's do this one. So you can see here that based on this theme, we're using the Vine Skills default here, that this theme has the line numbering turned on and like i was saying you're only going to see it down to about 10 but it's going to continue and like i said it's only going to show for a pdf um, but if we don't want that one we can come here we can do the default um, outlaw and i think most of these most of the fonts are the same so it's not really showing many differences that one you can see did change it i think the font changed and maybe the size so you know depending on your document you can toggle back and forth which theme you want. So you can have multiple themes depending on what documents you want. But like I was saying, I wouldn't be able to come in here and I wouldn't say, okay, this one paragraph, I want this to be, you know, um, Times New Roman or a different font than what this actually is. Um, and I guess this one is Times New Roman. So I want this to be something other than Times New Roman. You're not able to do that because this isn't a word processor. You're not able to go in and pick and choose, you know, which paragraphs you want. It just has to be a standard across your org. So that's kind of the only drawback there, but just something worth noting as you're, you know, developing your own themes and making your own changes in your Outlaw org. All right. Well, I think that covers it for our Teams tab section today. I hope you enjoyed this video.